Well, only a few jobs in the world carry the risk of getting beat up by an irate redneck. But Ron and Amy Shirley face that every day. That's because they're the owners of Lizard Lick Towing, and they make repossession their profession. Take a look. Ron and Amy Shirley are stars of True TV's hit series, Lizard Lick Towing. The show follows the adventures of Amy and Ron's repo company in Lizard Lick, North Carolina. They track down and repossess cars, often in dangerous situations. Amy, a former power lifter, runs the office while Ron disarms irate owners, not with his size or his strength, but with his wit. His funny sayings are known as Ronisms. You know what? I know you all roosted up, but I ain't feeling your cockadoodle-doo. Well, I'm a big guy, but he had more roles in a New York bakery. He's repo Ron to many, but others know him as Revelation Ron. When he's not repoing cars, Ron can be found preaching the gospel. Well, Ron and Amy Shirley, thank you so much for being with us today. It's great to have you here. You are in a tough business. Ron, how'd you get started in that? You know, I just kind of stumbled, bumbled into it. Uh, I was always an adrenaline junkie, and, uh, you know, to be honest with you, God just opened a door. I was having some tough times in college, and um, actually got struck by lightning and couldn't go back to college. And, Good grief. Yeah, I was looking for something to do, and uh, one day my brother just rolled up and said, I'm selling some cars. You want to go pick them up? And I said, there's a one-legged duck swimming in a circle. And <laughs> I've been there ever since. You talk about an adrenaline rush. Amy, you get that on a regular basis because you deal with some pretty angry people. You don't really know when you're going out there what to expect, do you? And they always tell people that uh, life's like a box of chocolates in the repo industry. You never know what you're going to get. Boy, that is the <laughs> truth. Speaking of that, on one show, one of the guys whose car was being repoed actually came after your wife. How do you how do you handle that kind of stuff on a daily basis? Well, you know, Amy's got a heart of gold, but uh, she's tougher than Tarzan feet. <laughs> you know, she's a mixed martial arts fighter. She's a former mortician. She's a world champion power lifter. So I tell most people it's easier to jump on that train than it is jump off. So how do you prepare for that kind of a day? I mean, Amy, here you are. You're going out. You've got a job. You know you, you, you're hired by someone to take back cars that aren't being paid for. But how do you prepare yourself for the potential danger that's a part of that? I mean, I don't think you ever really become prepared because you never know what you're going to get when someone walks into the office. Um, most of the time, we try to stay very even keel because what I tell a lot of people is that when you put a lot of testosterone <laughs> into the same room, it becomes a battle. So that's why I usually confront the person first and uh, try to talk to them and see where we're going to go. Now, Ron just said you had a heart of compassion. Ron, what about you? I mean, lots of times, of course, there are the angry people who are just furious that this is happening, but then there are people who just have come on hard times, you know, and life is difficult. And having a car repoed can really kind of tie the whole mess up with a bow. How, do you have compassion for people as you're... You, you know, you, you, you have to. It, uh, a lot of times, you're not taking somebody's vehicle. You're taking their life. Absolutely. You're taking their, their means for supporting a family. You're taking the way to get their child to school. You're taking, you're taking something from them that they feel like you can't replace. Yeah. And, you know, my life verse is John 16, 33. In this world, you will have trials and tribulations, but take heart. And, and I try to use that to be compassionate because it is, it's not about will these come, will these storms come. The storms are coming. It's about how we weather the storm. And what I've learned is that nine times out of ten, it's a lot easier to weather a storm if the person driving the boat has a little bit of an umbrella. So we try to give them that umbrella. And what you don't see is the times that we spend with them trying to minister to them or love on them or doing some secret Santa or taking and, and, and trying to give back to them without publicizing it or making it known. And, you know, with, without that, you know, a lot of these people would end up in a much deeper hole than where they're at to start with. Yeah, you really have a unique opportunity to speak into people's hurt and their need, don't you, Amy? We do. We also do uh, chicken pickings, is what we call it, at the end of the whole year. We'll get all the people that we've repoed together, and we'll have a mm. big uh, chicken picking. And do you find that most of them have kind of come full circle and gotten their lives together, or what's that like? Yeah, most of the time. I mean, we don't always come in. You know, sometimes we get a lot of people that um, they just never learn. But, you know, you have to love them through it because that's the one person you don't want to give up on. Yeah. Ron, you kind of had a tough upbringing. You came through some difficult times. Talk about, really, you almost had a, you almost died. I mean, talk about what you went through. You know, it's, uh, 
I don't think that my life's probably been any tougher than anybody else. Mine's just been a little bit different than everybody else. Um, I had a, a large addiction with drugs. Um, <laughs> large addiction with drugs, a lot of violence. I had a great mother, great father, great family, great wife. And so, you know, God allowed me to go through so many trials and tribulations to, to try to build a fortress around me so that I could help others. Um, I went through a sexual molestation when I was 14. Um, just lived, you know, I tell everybody there's a lot of difference in dancing with the devil and sleeping with him. And me and the devil were great bedmates. But it was all of my own doing and my own accord. And, and through all this, when I came to salvation and know Jesus Christ, it's just such a great building block. You know, he's given me so many steps and so many avenues to take my hurt and my pain and share love and happiness with others, to, to look at them and not say, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, but to say, Bo, I've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. I know how you feel because I felt that way. And it, it's such a great thing that he's given me such a ministry and a platform. We run the, what we call the dirt church. And it's just preach the gospel wherever the boom drops, but we do it with love. You know, we don't force a pill down your throat and tell you if you take Jesus, everything's going to be okay. We tell you we've been there. And we know that when you're reaching for the rose of redemption, you're going to prick your finger on the thorn. And Amy, as you're watching this man that you love and married go through these struggles, because you guys were together already at that point, how did you handle that? <laughs> I spent a lot of time on my knees, <laughs> definitely. And uh, I couldn't really, I could not relate to Ronnie because I was never in that situation. So me and his mom figured out, well, we just have to love him through it. And that's what we did. Yes. So how is he using that today, Ronnie? I mean, here you are. You guys have a great TV show. There are lots of people watching you. You're not only having a chance to impact the people whose cars are being repoed, but the people who are watching you have compassion on people who are struggling. How, how do you think that impacts others? You know, I hope that people can see that it's, it's that we don't we don't talk about it. We just live it. We do it. Um, you know, I think it's the unsaid things when you're out there looking for the one. You know, there's, there's a lot of commercials out there that catch my attention, but the one the most is where one person opens a door at the beginning of the commercial, yes, I know and exactly it goes full circle to where at the end somebody's opening a door for that. And, that. and that is what I'm hoping that God is using for people to see with us, is that we walk it and we live it. We don't just talk about it, you know? And, and if you see that, hopefully you will pay it for it. Well, you meet people in hard places in their lives, and God's really placed you strategically to bring a word of hope in the middle of that and you know most of the time he can't do us through that until he's done it in us right <laughs> you're right <laughs> so thank you so much well for more with ron and amy shirley check out lizard lick towing new episodes there every monday night that's at 10 p.m and they're on true tv that's appropriately named isn't it ron and amy <laughs> thank you for being with us Thanks, great sir. to have you here pat hang on to your car keys oh. hey i'm paid up on my car thanks but i'd sure hate to be in the repo business great Day, people coming after you with guns and hatchets and hammers and whatever. Have a wife who's a power lifter and a martial artist. Good grief, what a combination. Well, still ahead, the one move that nearly cost this street dancer his life. <laughs>